In the stress reduction field, we find it helpful to differentiate between external and internal stressors. Here's some examples of some external stressors from a recent workshop. Demands from my employer. Someone in my family is ill and I'm the primary caregiver in addition to my job and the rest of my family. My car was sideswiped and I have to take care of it. I'm stretched financially. My son is into drugs. I was just diagnosed with cancer. You get the idea. One thing they all have in common is that some element of these stressors is beyond our control, which in itself is stressful. To the extent that we can change it, we do the very best we can. And then we have to cope with the part we can't control or change. I can't help people much with their external stressors, but what we can effectively work on is the internal aspect. Internal stress can be defined as the way we think and feel about what's going on and how much we're thinking, that is worrying, about these issues when they aren't actually happening. Here is where we can make an enormous difference. If you're with your family and one of your kids is telling you something, but your mind is still worrying about those changes that may or may not occur at work, not only are you missing the present moment, but your mind is sending threat signals to your body and the stress hormones are getting going. Have you ever been sitting innocently on your couch, watching the news, getting frightened by some of the economic news, and let your mind take you to destitution and homelessness? I have. Well, I'd like you to try something with me, if you will. I'd like you to take your dominant hand and hold your thumb and your index finger about an inch and a half, two inches apart. Now in that space, I'd like you to imagine that there's a wedge of a juicy, fresh lemon. Looking in that space and seeing the peel and the little sections, and maybe you can even smell that lemon. Now start to bring it towards your mouth, like you're gonna bite into that lemon. What do you notice? Most people tell me they actually salivate or pucker up. Did you notice that? Our bodies respond to this imaginary lemon and prepare our mouths to bite into it. So when we worry about things that aren't actually happening in the moment, it's important to be aware what this does to our bodies. We have frightening thoughts and the adrenal glands respond. Now the good news is this is the part where we can make a huge change through mindfulness, meditation, and yoga. Because through training, we can develop the ability to choose where our attention goes. And this is enormously empowering. And it gives our bodies and minds the break we have been longing for. So what is mindfulness? It means simply paying attention in a non-judgmental way to what's going on around us and inside us, moment to moment. Let's do a short mindfulness exercise to demonstrate what I mean. So I'd like you to just take a moment and look around at your surroundings. Just take them in, not critiquing them or wanting to fix them. Simply see them. And now shift your attention to your ears and to the sounds in your environment. These are the sounds of your present moment. And now let's shift to feeling all the parts of your body in your chair, feeling your feet, your hands. Were you able to move your attention from seeing to hearing and from hearing to feeling? You've just shown yourself that you can choose where your attention goes. And one other benefit is you may also notice that you feel more present. Through practice, we can train ourselves not to go all the way down the spiral and to appreciate the present moment.